I'm Jesse Jacobs, and I'm here today with Christine Savage of Samovar Tea Lounge. And we're here to talk about tea, of which we're looking at quite a few types. And um, let's start with just tea 101, Christine. As you see, all of these teas really look different from each other, but all tea is made from the same plant. This plant is Camellia sinensis, and it's a plant indigenous to the China, Burma, northern Vietnam, Assam region of the world. What distinguishes each kind of tea from one another is the way that it's processed. So these are all the same plant, just processed differently. There are about five or six different kinds of teas. There's white tea, green tea, wulong tea, black tea, pu'er tea, and a tea that's rarely seen outside of China, which is called yellow tea. You want to think about white tea as being the least processed tea. You can think of green tea as being the least oxidized of tea. White tea is the least processed, green tea is the least oxidized. Oolong tea is the class of teas that is semi-oxidized. So where a green tea is the least oxidized and a black tea can be the most oxidized, Wulong teas fall somewhere in between. And there's a range of, of processing. There are some Wulongs that are very green and some Wulongs that are very dark, like dark roasted. So what is black tea? Tell us about that. Black tea is um, a tea that's been encouraged to fully oxidize. And so it's, it's changing from the clear or light green polyphenols to theoflavin, which is the color of the infusion of a Wulong, mm. to theorubigen, which is this darker, more reddish color. Mm. Okay. And theorubigen is known for being good for your circulatory system and cleaning out your arteries. In China, black tea is known as red tea because if you look at the wet leaves or the infusion, it has more of a reddish color, like a rust, dark rust color, than it has a black color. And what is pu'er tea? Pu'er tea is the kind of tea that is fermented. So there are two ways that it can be fermented. There can either be a cooked pu'er or a raw pu'er. All pu'er starts off the same. The leaves are plucked from the tree and then it go undergoes a process that's called sai ching or sun curing. After that, to make a raw pu'er, the leaves are either left loose or they are compressed into shapes. So it could be compressed into a cake or a brick or put into the inside of a hollowed out bamboo or a hollowed out fruit. Wow. And at that point, it ferments and ages over time. The other kind of pu'er tea is cooked pu'er tea. And this is tea that's been fermented through an intentional accelerated fermentation process. And what is herbal tea? Herbal tea isn't actually a tea tea or a tea proper. Um, herbal tea refers to an infusion made from a plant that's not from the Camellia sinensis. Most herbal teas do not contain caffeine. There are some like yerba mate that does have caffeine, but the majority are herbs that are caffeine free. So people can either infuse the leaves of a plant, such as with mint or a flower, like with chamomile or jasmine, or um, a processed version of the plant, like with rooibos, or even I've seen infusions made from the peels of citrus fruits, like blood orange. Okay. So what does it take to brew great tea? How do you do it? Well, all you need to make great tea is filtered water, good tasting water, about one teaspoon of tea per cup of tea that you want to prepare, and the right temperature water. So for a black tea, some wulongs, and for pu'er tea, you want water that's about boiling temperature. But for green teas and white teas, you want water that has dropped down from boiling to about 180 degrees or lower. So Christine, what do you look for when you're looking for good tea? Well, I look for tea that is fresh, seasonal, and consistent in size and shape. So even though all these teas may look different, if you look at each one, each of the leaves are the same size, so you're going to get a uniform brew. And ideally, you also want to get tea that is organic and fair trade, depending on where the tea is coming from. So the fresher the tea, the more seasonal the tea, 
the healthier and more flavorful the tea will be for you. Thank you so much for joining us today and giving us a little Tea 101, and I will see you around in the tea rooms of America. Thank you.